Some say he has attitude, others that he's a brazen bully, and his staff call him Col Pot. But love him or hate him, it's impossible to ignore Col Allen. He's the editor-in-chief of Australia's cheekiest tabloid newspaper, Sydney's Daily Telegraph, and he's unknown among ordinary Australians, unless you happen to be a politician or a journalist. He's a colourful journalist from the old school, a master of the witty, over-the-top headline that sends politicians running for cover. And as you're about to see, that makes Col Allen a powerful and feared man. Good morning, good morning. Well, good afternoon. I'm not sure I've been in that many meetings this morning. I'm not sure what day it is. 2 p.m. wrap. Is that off? The, is that off? The, is that a publishing time at two, or is it off the standard two? Make it a red and make it bolder. What do you think? What do you think, Don? You understand that? You clear that? Yes, absolutely. My dear fellow. Not a problem. Uh, 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 absolutely uh, uh. crystal. No, I'd, I'd like to know where the captain stands. Oh, sure. oh, the captain stands about here. Mike. About there. Meet Col Allen, the captain of one of Rupert Murdoch's Australian newspaper flagships, Sydney's Daily Telegraph. Otherwise known as the Harlot of Holt Street or the Daily Terror, the newspaper has a notorious ability to strike fear into public figures and politicians alike who understand more than most the power so brazenly wielded by the telly. Oh, it's a very serious competitive proposition and any government has got to read a successful tabloid paper that's out there winning the circulation battle. I think the, uh, the Telegraph is a very powerful and influential paper if it wishes to be. And Carl, during his editorship, woke up to the fact that it, it could be used in, a, in a, a most powerful fashion. You see, the Telegraph can cause a lot of fear to politicians and bureaucrats. And that fear prevents good public policy because they're too scared of criticism because it happens to, to be contrary, the policy happens to be contrary to the values of the leadership of the Telegraph, then that's bad. It's obviously a critical issue for us. And I have some ideas, um, and, uh, and I'd just like to pass those on to you if I can. As editor of the Telegraph for seven years, and now editor-in-chief of both the Daily and Sunday Telegraphs, Col Allen has presided over two of Australia's top-selling newspapers, a position that affords him serious clout. Why is Col Allen and The Telegraph important to both federal and state politicians? Because Col's prepared to use his power, because he's prepared to take very strong positions on politics, uh, and The Telegraph goes right into a whole heap of marginal seats, particularly in Western Sydney, it's very, very powerful. If the telly took a set on you, they could make life very difficult. Uh, the telly As a government? As a government. Well, it was a very outstanding but brief speech you made in the House this afternoon, Premier. Col Allen's firmly put his unmistakable stamp on the irreverent, irascible daily tabloid, operating in the biggest, richest market in the country and outselling its nearest rival, the Fairfax Sydney Morning Herald weekday editions, by almost two to one. There's even grudging respect from some journos at the more highbrow Herald. I think the Daily Telegraph is a, is a very good newspaper. To my dismay, sometimes I think it reports our city better than the Sydney Morning Herald. Not always, but sometimes. Where would you place the Telegraph in terms of media, including radio, of importance to politicians? in this city, in this state? Oh, I think they would say number one. There was a time when unquestionably the answer was the Sydney Morning Herald. It was the, the one with the, the influence. Uh, the clout. The clout. That's passed. The, the, the baton has passed to the Daily Telegraph and it passed under Cole Allen's editorship, in my view. Loza. How are you? How are you, mate? Good, Good, Good to see you. Good to see you, mate. How you going? All right. I'm well. Come over and say hello to the Prime Minister. Have you got your view with you, yes, your bro? Yeah. Bring her over. The colourful Col Allen, a blunt, straight-talking, old-style journo, came from Dubbo in country New South Wales and cut his teeth as a go get him young reporter at the now-defunct Daily Mirror. As he's risen through the News Limited ranks to the role of Editor-in-Chief, 
Col Allen and his newspaper are both liked and loathed in almost equal parts. He has the basic skills of the craft, but he also has a bit of attitude, and he's not afraid to express that attitude. It gets people talking, and that's part of the role of a newspaper that wants to be relevant in any society. I don't think they're daring at all. I think there is nothing daring about being a bully. That's the real thing that Col Allen and his editorial policy are about. It's about bullying. You see sterling examples of it where there is somebody who is universally unpopular. It's so easy to kick someone when they're down, and the Telegraph is a past champion at kicking fallen people. But how much of the ruthless tabloid editor is the real Col Allen? His golfing mates of 15 years offer some insight. Ah, it makes me look good <laughs> in a humane way. <laughs> Well, oh. because he's so inhumane, you mean? <laughs> he's, he's quite ruthless. But he's quite good company. I enjoy his company. He's cold. Yeah, he's just cold. That's the only way I've, I've known him for 15 years too, and he's... That's all right, Dennis. It's funny, he's, he, can be, he can be very generous, but on the other hand, he can turn around and... Like, you think maybe he's getting a bit soft, and all of a sudden, boom, you're gone. <laughs> we've seen, haven't we, we've seen some terrific snaps. That's, that's always, you know, a duck oh. hook into the water, and you just stand back. It's fantastic to watch sometimes. Shit. Where'd it go? Things like this. Have a go at me. <laughs> Another who's seen Col Allen's personal antics is ex Telegraph reporter Stephen Main. On his Crikey.com website, Main published a story on Col Allen, curiously and indelicately titled. Pissing in the sink. What did that mean? Um, it meant that uh, I occasionally pissed in the sink. In your office? Yep. Is there a reason for that? Um, what, you wouldn't walk to the bathroom? Well, there's a long tradition of this here, you see. I mean, a very long and excellent tradition. Um, um, and it, let me say, it wasn't a frequent thing, and it was, it was done as much as anything to entertain the likes of Mr Main, and I'm glad that it succeeded. Cole's a tough cookie. He's, he's quite ruthless, quite tough. Sydney's Lord Mayor, Frank Sartor, has had some monumental <laughs> stouches with Col Allen. <laughs> the man who'll never have lunch with me. The man who'll never see me again. That was a good piece this morning. Oh, wow. Wasn't that funny? While the two maintain an uneasy relationship, Sartor nonetheless acknowledges the newspaperman's journalistic talent. He's a good newspaper man, there's no question that he's good at his job. Why? Well, because he can pull the essence out of a story very quickly. Uh, so much so that sometimes it really irritates that he picks that angle. Sydney talkback radio king Alan Jones has also been the subject of Col Allen's withering headlines. I think he's very able. I think he's very able. Mm. See, he's got a... I call it a snout, he's got a snout, he, he, he sniffs out, he, he's a knockabout bloke, he's got a good, a good nose for the people out there. I mean, it's no use sort of putting an overthrow in Vanuatu on the front page of the Daily Telegraph. I mean, out in the suburbs, they're not interested in that. They, they may be at some point down the track, but he, he knows basically what is news from their standpoint. Of uh, a very good antenna, and any politician in the business of, of building support and persuading people would be at fault if he or she didn't test ideas on him. That doesn't mean you, you sign up to everything being espoused by the, the editor-in-chief, but it, it does mean that there's a, there is a dialogue. 